Hi, I'm John McLaren, and with the recent announcement of the DFI 5.0 specification, I thought I'd take this time to tell you about what is DFI and why do we need a fifth version of the specification and how can you take advantage of that. So first of all, let's talk about what DFI is. So in most systems today, whether it's mobile applications like cell phones or network equipment or uh, enterprise class servers, all uh, chips are going to, all devices are going to have an interface to DRAM. So this is the memory subsystem. And the memory su subsystem has a lot of different functions, and those functions are uh, handled by primarily two devices. There's a memory controller, and there's a DDR5. The DFI interface is an on-chip interface that connects the memory controller to the PHI. So the memory controller is where the control functions reside at. So this is where the system transactions come in and they're converted into uh, DRAM protocol. Uh, it does things like opening and closing the pages on the DRAM. Um, it optimizes the order in which transactions are run to get the maximum bandwidth out of the, uh, out of the DRAM interface. It uh, allows like uh, higher priority transactions to go to the front of the transaction queue. And it does other things like um, handling low power transactions, uh, putting the memory in, in and out of low power states. It uh, takes care of maintenance commands like refreshes and it allows the system to change the clock frequency on the DRAM. Variety of functions like that. So a controller is um, going to be a, digitally, a digital design circuit. And so it's soft IP, which means it's pretty much all the uh, logic is, is uh, running off of a single clock, and it's running at the clock rate of the system. It's um, referred to as soft IP because there aren't really any special layout restrictions that are required <clears throat> when it's being implemented into a larger design. So then the PHI is a very different device. So the PHI consists of a lot of different functions like analog functions. So it's going to have things like delayed lock loops in it. It's going to have delay lines. Um, and it's going to have I.O. buffers. And all these, um, all these different components of the design have to be able to run at a very high speed. They got to, instead of just running at the system uh, clock speed, they need to be run at the higher clock rate of the, of the DRAM. It also is where all the training logic is at, which is used to um, optimize the relationship of all these signals. So you have um, strobes that have to be put into the center of data eyes and other signal alignments that have to be uh, optimized. A lot of this is done initially, and, and it's even done periodically during normal operation. So the PHI is a very different device, and it's, uh, it requires very custom layout, and it's what we would call hard IP. That is, that the layout is done by the engineers, and everything's hand-placed in very specific places, and then it all has to be locked down so it can run at a lot, much higher operation. So the bottom line is that the the team of engineers that's designing the controller and the team of engineers designing the PHI are typically going to be two very different groups of people. So DFI was developed to allow these two different um, devices to be designed to a common interface. So DFI is developed by, uh, by the DFI group, which is an industry consortium consisting of experts from leading companies in the industry. So the question might be, okay, so that's what DFI is, but why do you need yet another version of it? We're actually working on the seventh spec, and every one of these specs has been initiated as a result of new memory technologies being introduced into the, um, into the marketplace. In this case, that would be uh, DDR5.0 and LPDDR5. So, um, so the spec has to be changed to incorporate new features that are coming out as part of these new memory technologies. For example, there's been a lot of work done in the interface to deal with new clocking structures within the new DRAM. So the, um, 
the DFI has to deal with now multiple clock domains, uh, which is different from what we had in previous versions of the spec. In addition, in addition to that, there's also a major new section for uh, doing clock control on the interface as well uh, as part of the new memory uh, technology. But as long as we're opening up the specification, there's always things that can be improved on. So there's a variety of other improvements being included. Uh, the low power interface on DFI has been improved. We've um, completely separated the uh, low power uh, control of the data path from the low power uh, for the command and address, which allows better controllability. Um, there is uh, a new section on uh, interface interactions. Um, previously, the spec really didn't talk about what happens if multiple interfaces of the DFI are operating at the same time. There's some uh, protocol issues that arise that are um, that really haven't been addressed before, but now there's a new section uh, that talks about that. In addition to that, DFI used to allow uh, training to be done. Uh, it was kind of controlled by the controller and it was communicated across the interface to the PHY. And we've now moved to completely to uh, PHY independent training mode. So that entire interface has been removed and all the training has been being done in the PHY and there's been a number of updates to the interface to reflect that. So finally, what can you do uh, to take advantage of the availability of this new spec. There are um, thousands of people who have, um, who are members of the uh, DFI um, user group and uh, that provides access to the specification. So if you go to ddr-fi.org and you put, uh, you know, apply, put, fill out your your name and information, then you can get access to the spec. The spec is used by um, controller designers, by FI designers, SOC integrators, and actually a large number of university students have access as well. So if you do that, it'll send me an email, I'll approve, approve you, and you can download the spec and uh, learn more about DFI. I'm John McLaren, and this has been Whiteboard Wednesday. <laughs>